Hello and welcome to another edition of Deep Dives at the Peterson Automotive Museum. Today we're going to talk about the collection's 1941 Cadillac three-window coupe, originally the property of screen star Clark Gable. Nineteen forty-one was really a banner year for Cadillac. It's the year that they introduced the egg crate grill, which was to be a staple of Cadillac styling even to the present day. But nineteen forty-one was also an important year for uh, another couple of reasons. It's when Cadillac really stepped into the modern world, went into the modern styling. It got a little bit more linear, a little longer, a little lower, a little wider. Um, attributes that would come to characterize the, the, the car in the future. For those of you who are 1941 Cadillac historians, you're probably looking at this car and thinking, there's something unusual about it. Cadillac never made what they call a three-window coupe. Well, you would be right about that. But when you're Clark Gable, you can get what you want if you have the right connections. And Clark Gable had the right connections. He bought the car from Hillcrest Cadillac, who in turn had it sent to Don Lee Cadillac, who had a coach building arm, uh, or a, in its day, a customizing arm. And he had them blank in the quarter windows. He had them rake the windshield. He had them put a fabric covering on the top, and he dechromed it or shaved the chrome off of it. In other words, five different things that would come to categorize post-war customization as practiced by George Barris and Gene Winfield and any number of other very popular uh, customizers. But again, this was before the war. These were subtle modifications that Don Lee was able to do uh, at Clark Gable's behest, even before they became popular with customizers and, and, and hot rodders. Now, 1941 was not only a special year for Cadillac styling, it was also a special year for Cadillac engineering because that was the year when Cadillac got its first automatic transmission. But Clark Gable got his so early in the production run that they weren't yet producing cars with automatic transmissions. And he had to settle for a three on the tree uh, manual transmission. But that's not a bad thing because what you were getting when you got any Cadillac in 1941 was a high compression, a flathead V8 that could take this car from zero to 60 faster than you would probably want to these days. Uh, it's not, again, it's not a car that you probably would want to throw into a corner because it's a very pliant suspension. But again, it was everything that a luxury car needed and was expected to be uh, in the immediate pre-war period. As legend would have it, Clark Gable gave it to his wife, Carol Lombard, uh, on the occasion of their anniversary. But sadly, Carol was not able to enjoy it because she was killed in a plane crash. And Clark Gable couldn't bear to, re to retain the car after that. So he ultimately sold it to Roy Del Ruth, the Hollywood uh, director, who, who then let it go in the secondhand car market. And Mr. Peterson was fortunate enough to acquire this car about 20 or so years ago from a private collector uh, down in Orange County. He refurbished it to the, de to the degree that it needed it because it was in very good condition when he got it. Uh, but the main thing that he did was um, he changed the wire wheels, which were actually a post-war um, embellishment uh, back to the original wheels with, with the hubcaps and the, and the white wall tires. So this car looks just like it did when Clark Gable owned it in late 1940, early 1941 and it marks a really important transition between custom coach building and customizing the kind of uh, restyling that would take the world by storm after World War II. They were able to fit pockets in the area where the windows normally would have been so you could stow small items. And in Clark Gable's tradition, he had a St. Christopher medal put on the glove box door. Um, the, the patron saint of, of travel and an embellishment that Clark Gable gave to virtually every one of his vehicles.
Thank you everyone for joining me on another edition of Deep Dives at the Peterson Automotive Museum. We'll see you next time.